So is it escalating from drug dealing to other things? Yeah, well, Brian, Brian's went to um, robbery, post office robbery. And post like office that. robberies. Is that, yeah, is that armed he robbery? He time. No, I don't get it armed, no. Yeah, he would have been probably a knife, you know. But like, so, so what? what's the procedure to do that, Matt, to rob a post office? He was office? very young. He was very young. And um, it wasn't me done it. It was um, look, Brian had organised it. And never organised it. He got involved in it. And um, and he got his boss off for it. So you just you go know? in with a knife while they're in there or... Yeah. And mm -hmm. hold them up. I think that was just a traditional hold up. Yeah. Post orders, stamps. Help bandit and all that. Cash. Around the scarf. <laughs> Jesse James, you know. Right? It was yeah. all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so it was all that. And um, But like I so said, he's, uh, but later on, we were involved in anything that can that make us a buck, you know. And if that means um, um, taking van stuffs away from cash and carries or, or drug dealing or anything like that. So you robbing drug dealers? No, I don't think I've ever robbed a drug dealer. But like, so I fought over areas to, to control an area. Rivals. To sell my own drugs, yeah. So you get rivals in that, you get that. Um, what were yeah. those fights like? I don't know, a knife fight, I got stabbed. <laughs> um, I got, um, a guy jumped out of the car and um, came at me. I was uh, with a girl and um, her pram, and baby in it. And uh, I was talking to her. A nice summer evening and a uh, car jumps up and a guy comes over, he wants to speak to me. He's waving his arms, calling me this and that. I just want to talk. I just want to talk, blah, blah, blah. And what he was talking about was I'd barbed his, he had people organising, selling drugs in a certain area, and I'd barred them. I told them they can't, they can't do this here, you know, politely. <laughs> so like, so, so he's came at me and says he didn't want nothing to do with it. And I went, okay. And then he jumped behind his back and he pulled a knife out. And then he came at me, started waving this knife in a lovely summer evening. And um, Garbo Street in the Glass in, in <laughs> Glasgow, near Norfolk Court, I think. Yeah, down near the. So he's coming dancing that maybe with this, and I thought that like, he probably thought that I never had a knife, you know, but I was always told told up. Um, people are, you know, and um, and that thing. So I, don't, I think he thought I didn't have. Anyway, I've jumped out and, and flew mines out, and flashing blade, and. Uh, yeah, then a knife fight ensued. And it's quite weird when I've been in a knife fight, you know, um, how fast you've got to move. And um, and when that's coming at you, um, I don't know, it's hard. There's not many people who would go in a knife fight, you know. Um, but like, sir, when you're actually one to one with someone and your life depends on it, it's different from these guys in the ring, you know. And uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or the cages, you know. Um, nobody's going to die, man. But like, so nobody's going to try and kill you. Yeah, I think the difference is you can die in a professional sport, but like, so when you're up against somebody, they they're just trying to kill you. Yeah, they don't care. And um, but yeah, yeah, we fought that and um, a knife fight, and uh, I put my hand up and um, I went through my wrist, and uh, it was an electric shock all through me. So it was a lot of a lot of. Um, I fought with one hand, yeah, my knife with one hand, because yeah, this one was disabled. And uh, I still went ahead, and uh, and I, the guy seen that, and I think he backed off because he knew that I wasn't stopping. Even though it was like that guy, Monty Python, you know, he jumps about with one leg and all that. <laughs> I, would I would imagine that I would end up being no arms and uh, one, one, one leg, you know, cut off and uh, hopping about. You know what I mean? Told you I'm winning. And uh, the legs are. Uh, yeah, so it was a bad injury and I had to go to the hospital and, and get stitched up and stuff and um, it was quite deep and uh, that. So like, so, so that was the uh, Europe against, but like, so these are, um, I've seen violence and, and and like that as a, as an occupational hazard. Everything became, if you get ripped off, it was an occupational hazard. If you get money stolen, if you lost money, if you got wounded in a fight and um you got it's just all occupational. It's the life you were leading. There was a book called um, Riding the Tiger in it. If you got off the tiger, I'll eat you. you know what I mean? That's the sort of lifestyle you're leading. Did you lose count of the knife fights you had? I lose count, yeah, of the, the fights, yeah. Um, Do you get used to it? Always getting beat, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you develop a technique over time? Yeah, just, yeah, just fighting, fighting until you're beat, you know what I mean? Like, so, uh, no. no, you learn how you fight because um, along the way you're just, just street fighting and you're fighting at school and you, and you get taught in the, the cadets and 
and me and Brian knew how to use different weapons from the cadets. So we were confident, and, and Brian had a good dig on him, you know, he's been knocked a few people out. Um, so we, we were confident that way. Um, but like, so I was, um, I got a, I was in a pub and I was against the bar and then um, I was up there getting the bar and then there was, the door opened and um, five people looked in with masks on and stuff, you know, and masks on, calling to me and I'm looking about. Ah, I'm, not, I'm going, are they looking for me? Is that me you're looking for? <laughs> Wait a minute, yeah. And um, they wanted me to come outside and go in a van. Go in the van? Yeah. That's, I was, that's appealing. Catch you in a minute, lads, right? <laughs> uh, after my nibbles and my whiskey. I'll just be with you, you know? Mm. Yeah. So then, yeah, they were wanting to drag me through this thing. So, like, so the screw, the, the, um, so they came in because I wasn't going to. <laughs> that's the only reason they came in. And um, and they came running at me in the baseball bats and um, pickaxes and God knows what. So I've now got five of them coming at me. And um, what happened was there was a, a there was a barmaid, yeah? And she had turned around and she'd seen these people running at me, yeah? And I could see them getting further and further inching. And the people in the pub who were normal drinkers, they had now moved to the other end of the pub. <laughs> So you've got one end of the pub, I mean, packed with, with, with revellers, yeah, that are on a night out. Then you've got this lunatic squad down the other end, right? Brandishing every weapon you can. I think one of them had a fireman axe, it's got me in the head, right? But a very small one. And um, and you've got me right in the middle on my own, right? Uh, trying to enjoy a drink. And uh, you've got this, this barmaid came up to me, right? And she, and she, she turned around. And she put it on the barn, a screwdriver, a long screwdriver. Wow. Yeah. Then she walked away. <laughs> but that's what she done. And um, God bless her to this day, um, because that's what saved my life, you know. And um, I took it off the thing. I had a long coat on. It was the 90s, early 90s, and um, used to wear long coats, yeah. And sometimes you would have a big hood on them, yeah. But like, sir, I put the screwdriver in my pocket. Then I threw a chair at this mob to disperse them, yeah. But they came running at me and uh, they got a few wax in. Uh, so I seen stars in yellow and blue because there's baseball bat over my head. And then freedom came at me and I'm trying to fight them off. And I could see the, the glint of a small wax, you know, above my head. And I says, that's coming towards me. And I thought to myself, I remember, I said, that's going to connect, you know, <laughs> that's going to land. And it did, it got me right in the centre of the skull. I've got, I've got, uh, what happened was, my skull, the, 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 there's a protective layer between your skull and the brain, yeah? Yeah, that was all broken up. So I got some stitches up there, a few stitches um, across the front of my head. But um, I never stopped there because um, I'm still fighting. I'm still awake and uh, I fell backwards. Tables have moved out of the way. I fell on a chair the way I am right now. My legs are splayed out. I'm now sitting on the screwdriver, my pocket, Sean. I can't access it. Yeah. So now I've got people either side of me. Some have chosen to break my legs. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're breaking, um, they're trying to break my legs. Yeah. Um, I know that's what they're trying to do. Right? Yeah. I'd put widows and orphans' money on it. That's what they're trying to do, right? <laughs> and uh, so they're trying to break my legs. And um, the other ones are trying to break my skill. And uh, so they're swinging baseball bats and I'm kind of ducking and they're smashing frames on the wall behind me and glasses all coming down. And uh, the next minute I get the clump. So I got, I got some severe shots across the head because I wasn't protecting my head. The reason why I'm not protecting my head, yeah? I don't know where I got the will to withstand what was happening to me. Um, but I'll tell you what, what my main thought was, yeah? Trying to get that screwdriver <laughs> out of my pocket. Right? <laughs> because that was all I had at that time. Um, I got it out. Um, I got this person twice in the stomach. 
and I got him twice in the face, either side of me. And and once they had been wounded, they backed off a bit, gave me a breathing space. And uh, that's when I, they, they just started back off. So they, they, I must have wounded them quite badly, or they must have got a fright, you know. But others finished with me. But like so, that's what got them pushed back and they pushed back. Um, I got up and staggered. I stood and I looked down at the pub and I could see everyone terrified down that end. There was no witnesses to this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you, when the police were involved, nobody seen a thing. And uh, yeah, even me, I, said, I don't know what happened. I think I fell. I don't know, I don't know what Pochin, I think, I was drinking that day. Yeah, honestly, God, yeah, 120 people at that end, right? And a barmaid who gave me a screwdriver. Yeah. And nobody seen a thing. And then, and they say to people at the time, you must know Kevin Dooley. He's a, he's a bastard that we're saying to him. You know him. He's a gangster. He's a he's a, he's a a drug dealer. He's a low life, you know. Him and his twin brother are scumbags, you know. And there was another um, drug dealer who said that, uh, that after me and Brian got him his comeuppance, yeah, the one that stabbed me, um, we got, he got him his comeuppance a few weeks later. Both has got him um, and smashed his fancy car, but we'll be him inside it, you know. And uh, he says, later, <laughs> someone should have drowned those two like rats when they were born. <laughs> because we come from the River Clyde, you know, mm -hmm. which is funny. But like, say, um, so what happened in that time was I've staggered to the bar and stood there and, uh, and thought I was okay to walk. And I thought I would walk and Brian has alerted People are saying this is happening. It's got through the gorbals. So the people who done that left Glasgow, man, they got away. They, they, they laid low, you know. Why they, did they want to get you so hard? Because I got them so hard. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, again, it's over controlling areas and drug dealing and um, and, uh, and me and Brian. Um, it's just a comeback. It's tit for tat, isn't it? And they're coming heavy, you know. You know what I mean? So if you've done one of them, they want to do one of you, and um, I'd be to do one of them. So this is them coming back to do it, one of us, and it just happened to be me. And uh, so, but Brian was quite, quite, quite organised, and my gang was well organised, and um, and lots of information was coming in really, really quickly. So it was easy to track people down, and we need to know who's behind those masks, you know. So we found that out as well, and um, and things were resolved, you know. But like so, which I don't want to discuss. But like so, um, what happened was as the out. It's like young people think it's tough and, and do that, you know. And it's, we want to get involved in crime and stuff. Like when I talk to young people, I tell them what, what I had to do to come back from that. You know, um, I had a massive brain injury, and only recognised by Brian's wife, whose sister had 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 a tumour, a brain tumour. So when I got to Brian's house and that, and um, it was a really busy night, people were running out, phones were on, and and all my mates were out driving about and finding who's who and finding who was there and who set me up because I had been followed, you know. So somebody had been sent on my on my tail and had followed me for a couple of pubs, then phoned and told people to come where I was. So um, <clears throat> I got him back, yeah, on my own, and I got well, you know. The guy that done that and set me up, but like so, um, for me, um, I couldn't speak. I was trying to write, and I couldn't write properly, and I was writing hat shit. Yeah, I was trying to explain what happened, and in the hospital when they got to the hospital, they thought I was drunk and, and discharged me from the Victoria Hospital. But it was a massive brain injury. I had massive. My brain is smashed against my skull, and um, I had massive bruising. So I couldn't speak, um, and when I got to the Southern General Hospital, which is the neurobiological department, um, I went there that night, and um, they'd done some tests, and they found that uh, um, I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I, I didn't know what words were. I couldn't write, and the doctor asked me, um, "What that?" I showed me his watch. I didn't know what a watch was. He showed me his pen. He said, "Do you know what this is, Kevin?" I says, "No." He showed me pictures of Margaret Thatcher and things, you know. And I think I said cow. And the doctor said, I think you're right, you're right. <laughs> I think you know you know her. So like so uh, there was kinda they were showing me photographs of Santa and I didn't know who that was either. And um 
So Brian, my family, my family came to visit me. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know who my sisters were and things. Didn't know their names. Um, I was trapped inside my head. And um, so I had to recover from that. And um, Brian had to sign a form to, for them to use a new drug, which had been tried in France. And they said it would really localise or not. It could make it worse. But they said it would localise the bruising. You get massive bruising um, on a part of the brain with a memory and all that is. So they gave me that and um, and I started getting a bit better and I could go home and stuff. But they told me that I would never be 100%. They told me that I would never speak properly and I do speaking engagements today. Yeah, <laughs> um, This is what I mean by my recovery, you know. And then it says that I would never be able to write or read because I can't, I would never be able to see the words from it there. I was calling, I was calling, I was watching the TV in Brian's house and I was calling them. Um, I think Patrick Swayze was on TV playing with a tiger. Um, and I was saying, look at the guitar. He's got the guitar, you know? So there was, there was lots of, I had to learn words and stuff again. But they says, um, I'll never be able to write. And yes, I write, I'm writing a book and um, I've got a blog and I write articles and newspaper articles um, and media articles all around the world, you know? Um, they says, I've never been, I'm the fittest I've ever been. I'm the fittest I've ever been, you know? So... Yeah, I got back from it. But like I so said, people don't realise that the glamour, they try and glamorise things. They don't understand that what you're going through to, to back out of things, you know. So these are the risks we take. And if you're involved in, um, I think it was Jimmy Boyle, Maria, he said, um, if the poor people in Glasgow live on the edge of, yeah, the criminal classes live on the razor's edge, you know, mm. and um, he's it's very real, you know. So... I can kind of impact, I kind of let that, try and get that impact on people that you don't just get injured and walk away. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of distress from other people and stuff, you know. So so I'm not here glamorising what, what my life I'm just I'm trying to, um, at this stage of the game where I am now, um, some things I can laugh at and um, some things I don't think about, you know. So like, so that's where I am at the moment, but it took a lot, a lot to get there because there's trauma from injury in there. So you can't kind of, it takes years to kind of get to a place where you can kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't disable you. 